Britain, Britain, Britain. Could there be a more fitting subject for one of our lists? Compute says no. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Little Britain characters. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most memorable characters from this iconic TV show. For I will never be able to tell her my shameful secret, that I am gay, 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 homosexual, gay. Number 10, Mr. Man. I was wondering if you could help me. I'm looking to buy a painting of a disappointed horse. If you've ever worked in retail, chances are you've had to deal with someone like this. David Williams' Mr. Man has very particular requirements for his purchases. How about this one? That horse looks more perturbed than disappointed. <laughs> These include a pirate memory game that needs to be not too piratey and a costume of comedian David Baddiel. He doesn't mind waiting until the item becomes available either, even if it means waiting for a film that hasn't been made yet and might never be. Oh, I would like to purchase a record of James Last playing the hits of Nelly Furtado <laughs> on the banjo. And I would like a picture on the cover of James Last holding out his hands displaying stigmata. It becomes increasingly clear that all these requirements are just intended to irritate Matt Lucas's unfortunate shop owner Roy and his unseen, limbless wife Margaret, which just makes it all the more hilarious. Does it have the sleeve notes by Dr. Graham Garden? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, Sir Norman Fry. At this point, I fell on top of him. <laughs> and I regret to say, a part of my body accidentally entered him. As far as I'm concerned, that is the end of the matter. Thank you. How many times do we see real politicians do this? It's how his contrived excuses parody politicians in the real world that makes this character so memorable. Sir Norman is a Tory MP who, in each skit, appears before a press gathering with his wife and children to explain a hugely embarrassing event. However, shortly after my arrival, my clothes accidentally fell off. <laughs> At that moment, I slipped on a glacé cherry and landed inside one of the men. The humor arises as his character desperately tries to justify his outrageous behavior and how events might lead to his clothes accidentally falling off or following men into laboratory cubicles to discuss foreign policy. Unfortunately, I slipped on the wet floor and became sandwiched between the two men in a position that the arresting officer informed me is known as a spit rose. Hey, could happen to anyone. Number eight, Anne. Hello, Anne. <laughs> she might have a limited vocabulary, but she makes up for it with outrageous deeds. A patient of little Bentcock Steven Spielberg Hospital, Anne is under the care of psychiatrist Dr. Lawrence, who just never seems to make any progress. See you later. Part of her reintegration into society, she takes on several jobs, including working in a library and a bowling alley. Oh, and she steals the Mona Lisa from the Louvre. Her other claim to fame is licking the Pope's face. That must be one of her own compositions. She doesn't say much beyond eh eh eh, but of course, once her mobile phone goes off, she becomes incredibly articulate. Hello? Yeah, sorry guys. Um, yeah, I'm just in the library at the moment. Can I call you back? Okay. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, Dame Sally Markham. I think I'd have a truffle. Oh, there was a full box here this morning. You've been scoffing again, haven't you, Miss Grace? Only appearing in the first series is this very unsubtle but very funny spoof of Dame Barbara Cartland. Special mention needs to be given to her offensive topiary, including designs of a middle finger and dogs having sex. Dame Sally is a novelist who dictates stories to her secretary. Unfortunately, his stories tend to fall short, with one of her best attempts reaching 76 pages. Yeah, how many pages? Uh, 34. Uh, Teresa was similarly overjoyed. <laughs> 
So she resorts to desperate measures to lengthen her novels, including elongating words or just copying and pasting the entire contents of the Bible. The oldest trick in the book. End of chapter. This is wonderful, Dame Sally. Yes, it is rather. Chapter four. <laughs> As she went home in the twilight. Number six, Marjorie Dawes. Dust. <laughs> Anybody? No? High and fat, low and fat. Dust. Anybody? No? Dust. Originally making her first appearance on Shooting Stars as George Dawes' mother, Marjorie runs the local branch of Little Britain's weight loss group Fatfires. She begins as an enthusiastic leader, but quickly reveals her true colours when provoked to anger, lashing out at the other attendees. Because you're obviously an incredibly unhappy person. No, I'm not. Well, you deserve to be, and her mum doesn't speak to you anymore. Berating and belittling them for being overweight despite her own weight issues, she even goes as far as to insult her celebrity guest speakers like Vanessa Feltz. Vanessa Feltz, you and I know you weren't my messiah in it, you were fat. And despite punching downwards, it becomes more and more apparent from each skit that Marjorie has far, far, far more issues than those in her class. But she's doing her best, eh? Anyway, I'm getting plenty of exercise now, ain't I, eh? What's oh, a beast. Number five, Bubbles Devere. Mrs. Devere! Hello, Gita. My turn now, darling. <laughs> yep, it's Matt Lucas as another over the top diva. Well, when you're good at something. Bubbles is a permanent resident at Hillgrange Health Spa, attempting to live up to her image as one of the many wealthy guests. However, it becomes obvious she's racked up a huge debt and is completely broke, fleeing the room whenever confronted with the small matter of the bill. £17,300, darling. Thank you. But we don't need the cheque, do we, darling? Yes, we do. When cornered, she attempts to rectify the issue through the art of seduction, which in Bubbles' book involves immediately stripping off all her clothes. Are you a married man, Mr. Hutton? Yes, I am. And yet you allow yourself to be alone in a room with a rather beautiful woman. Number four, Sebastian Love. Who oh, is he? <laughs> yeah, he's got a double first at Cambridge, really knows his stuff. I don't like him. Why is that? I see the way he looks at you. <laughs> what about it? He was looking at you like he loves you. There's devotion to your boss, and then there's Sebastian Love. Portrayed by David Williams, Sebastian is the private secretary of the Prime Minister, played by Anthony Head. Is that everything? <laughs> yes. It's an awkward working relationship at best because Sebastian is head over heels in love with the PM, so much so that he becomes enraged at criticism of his boss and jealous whenever anyone else steals the spotlight. Prime Minister, I'd just like to say what. <laughs> His attempts at seduction are not exactly subtle, and it's pretty clear the PM gets the hint. Well, the PM might not reciprocate, but we love you, Sebastian. You Prime Minister sucks. How dare you! Get your hands off me, please, sir! Get your hands off me! Get your hands off me! Number three, Carol Beer. Get entered into a prize draw to win a free trip to Eurydisney. <gasps> oh, I think you'd like to open one of these, please, wouldn't you? Computer says no. <laughs> Even if you've never seen Little Britain, chances are you've heard someone use Carol Beer's catchphrase when technology lets them down. Computer says no. <laughs> <coughs> Carol works a variety of jobs involving computers, even though she doesn't seem to actually be able to use one. The requests she handles are all pretty straightforward, but according to Carol, the computer just won't allow them. I've got a good deal here. Yes? The Russian cargo vessel taking nuclear waste to the Baltic. Well, I, I really don't fancy that. All the pickle tearing you can eat. At least she often has a completely random alternative ready at hand. Flight to Orlando? Forget it. How about Guildford? She's also unhygienic on top of it all, intentionally coughing in customers' faces. Can you put your hands over your mouth when you cough, please? That's disgusting. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> Number two, Vicky Pollard. I am a elephant. <laughs> What's this? I bought that earlier. Still held up as the poster child for inarticulate teens in the UK, Vicky is an abrasive girl from the West Country, 
who can't help but cause trouble, usually off screen. Making children cry, smuggling drugs, working for sex hotlines, and trying to get pregnant for a council house. She's a tough one. It'll just be a few hours. <laughs> So you could give me baby evils. Yet, despite being sent to Borstal, whenever she's confronted or challenged about her abhorrent behavior, she resorts to rambling on in meticulous detail about local gossip and uttering her immortal and completely nonsense catchphrase. No, but, yeah, but, no, but, yeah, but, no, but, yeah, but, no, because I wasn't even with Amber. Yes, she's exactly as hilarious as she is annoying. Uh, VK? Why are you always trying to get off of my boyfriend? Oh my god, I still can't believe you just said that! Number one, Lou Todd and Andy Pipkin. Right, okay then, well, uh, start the clock, let's go, one minute. Carrot! <laughs> no, Andy, you have to describe it. You, uh, you, you, you mustn't say what the thing actually is. Yeah, no. This duo is arguably David Williams and Matt Lucas's most iconic creation. Sweet-natured Lou goes to ridiculous lengths to take care of his friend Andy, who's so lazy he pretends to be confined to a wheelchair. I don't want you to spend a whole day looking at pictures of naked ladies. I want that one and that one. <laughs> Andy further inconveniences Lou with difficult requests, often for things that he's already told Lou he doesn't like. A fact that Andy only realizes when he gets them. I look at Pillock. Andy's only redeeming quality is that he drops some choice words of wisdom off screen, at least according to Lou. Then again, maybe Lou just sees and hears what he wants to. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.